How's it going ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome back to Tyranny. I have just gone through and done a couple of level ups and that sort of thing. I've also hired a smith for the spire that we are currently at. I'm sorry if you wanted me to do that on camera, but I thought that kind of boring maintenance stuff. I could do some of it off camera to make it a little bit faster. So our next mission is to interact with this statue thing here, which I assume is a teleporter to get us into the world. I think the next mission is to go and see Tunon. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully. Depending on what happens. On closer inspection, a series of symbols carved around the base of the structure come into view. One symbol pulses with a blue-white glow. The pattern resembles the glowing lines of light seen on the floor of Ascension Hall, moments before you found yourself transported above the clouds. As you stare at the symbol, the chill of the wind abates your chest, and your chest swells with warmth. The air finally feels welcoming, your lungs sated at last. I'd be careful going any closer, the whole tower is humming with energies that we don't understand. Lantry holds his quill poised above a sheet of parchment with anticipation. Now I didn't say back away, let's find out what it does. Just be cautious. You staked your claim on the tower and everything in it. Whatever that scripture is, it belongs to you. I feel dizzy, do you feel dizzy? Barrack massages the brow of his helmet, causing a howl of grinding iron to echo across the expanse. What is this thing? The surface of the stone orb trembles at your words. For a brief moment, the solid rock undulates, the, the same motion as the quiet pond rippled by rain. An echo bounces back from afar, your voice distorted and unfamiliar. Is this thing? Your voice. For a moment there, it sounded like song. The scripture is once again still. There is a rush warmth through your body, a jolt of innovation that steadies your balance, a barrage of tactile senses Sensation floods your mind as you feel footsteps and wind, but not on your face or your limbs. A moment later, the flood of information begins to make sense. You are feeling the wind against the spire, and even the weight of your own feet, as if the spire were a second spine. With this connection made, you feel your awareness pull from this place, not as a traveller, but as one glimpse of the world from impossibly far away. In this moment, there is nothing you cannot see though you see it nearly all at once in a flood of sensation that is difficult to pass. You see a spire at the crossing of an ancient stone structure, two walls extending off into the distance. At the base of this eternal spire, settlers and merchants act in every way unconcerned, toiling under the observation of unforgiving taskmasters. As the shadow of the spire falls over them, the mood changes. The settlers pause in shared unease and look up at the sky towards you. Some of the faces looking at you are familiar. You recognise this place as Lethian's Crossing, where you served during the war. Near the sediment, built at the joining of the ancient walls, you see a breach in the massive masonry, a cleft into the forbidden, hidden realm within the old walls. Drift into the old walls entrance? Shadows envelop you, muting all sound and vision with slight delay. There is a feeling of perversion, of wrongness, Whatever arcane power is allowing your senses to drift free of your body seems to falter in this place. Figures haunt the stone walls, drifting emanations of cloud, claw, and fang. They pay you no heed, but you fear them all the same. In the depths of this forbidden place, the deepest chamber is bathed in light. An arcane symbol illuminates the floor, though the details hurt your eyes when you focus. With a gentle tug, your focus pulls back to a new horizon. Though it takes you a moment to recognise it as Vendrian's well. You've returned to the awareness of your immediate surroundings. The effect leaves you unsteady on your feet. Drift closer to the spire. The spire feels similar to the one you now occupy. Though instead of radiating arcane life, it reeks of dust and crumbling stone. A branch withering once pulled from its tree. It reaches for you with a barely perceptible tug. The link between you and the spire recedes. The arcane bond is still present but the mystical energies for a moment are quiet. Your body flooded with excitement and fatigue. It's unclear whether the mystic connection is strengthening you or siphoning. The tower offers nothing by way of answer, and you know that asking would only yield more silence and mystery. The deluge of sensation is over, but the positions of the other spires still linger in your mind. From your vantage point atop the mountain spire, you can easily spot the mysterious structure, each of them rising high above their distant surroundings. Okie dokie, so we're going to go take over some more spires, are we? 
Did you sense that? Lantry signs a long sigil in the air, squinting as you, at you as he works his cantrip. The ripples are everywhere. When you move, the magic of this place stirs and churns. The portal over there, those burning braziers, they all grow more intense as you approach. I think it's responding to your presence. Before we get ahead of ourselves, it's worth remembering that you ended Kairos' edict. That's no small feat. Maybe your connection to this place is related. Either way, sounds like something for the arcane minded to investigate. Be sure to see me after your audience with Toonon. We cannot let the Scarlet Chorus gain hold in the tears. Together, we can wipe them from the land. Come to me as soon as you can, Fatebinder. We have a lot of work to do. Okie smokey, it looks like we are going to see Toonon, I guess. Let's just go and do that, shall we? Stealth, I don't know why that was open. Okay, so we need the world map, and we are going to the Bastard City. Let's go, Toonon's caught. Two days and 12 hours, that's a long journey. I assume we're going to get attacked by someone on the way there. That's a long way. We usually get attacked moving in a couple of hours. And <laughs> no incident, not an incident. Happy about that. Pretty thrilled. I hope Toonon's pleased with me. Toonon, be pleased with me, master. Right. Actually, go fuck yourself. I forgot about that. Right. What do we have? Are you Toonon? Oh, you're Toonon. I see. You call yourselves officers of Kairos' army, but your conduct falls short of my expectations. The court finds your accounts of Vendrian's well lacking. Rife with misdirection and fallacy, fouled with baseless accusation. The shadows beneath Tunon's cloak darken and flare around him. Murmurs of unease erupt in the court. Listen. Your Honor, I have relayed the events as I experienced them. You can well imagine why my version conflicts with his. She makes a dismissive gesture to the Scarlet Chorus representative. On my honor. And on that of the great general, I would sooner snap my sword than perjure myself before you, Archon. Oh, you simply imply that falsehood comes easier to my lips than yours. You're a fool if you believe the Archon of Justice won't see through your lies because the disfavored think themselves better than an honest gang. Silence. The contradictions in your statements will be examined, and falsities threshed from truths. If we find you have perjured yourselves, let in Mark will see to your fate. The Archon turns and you feel his gaze upon you. Fate Binder, we will start with the matter of the Archons. Graven Ash and the voices of Nerat have declared war upon each other. In addition to violating Kairos' peace, they have thrown the conquest of the Tears into disarray. By all accounts, these hostilities began shortly after your arrival. Tell us what transpired. The Archons couldn't agree on who should lead the siege and descended into accusations of treachery. It seemed a mutual spat. The disfavoured were more deserving of the honour. Our tactics and training outmatched the Vendrian Guard at every turn. What balderdash! The disfavoured couldn't tip over a straw hut if they had a week to strategize. Our howling mob was better equipped to overwhelm Vendrian Guard. Our recruits were ready to throw themselves at the enemy. If only Ash and his legion would agree to a plan. The Fate Binder presents testimony. I warn you both against speaking out of turn. Something more than a mere disagreement unraveled this campaign. But I will return to that in time. Let us speak of Ascension Hall. The disfavored sing your praises across the realm, though the Scarlet Chorus appeal for charges of treason. Perhaps you can offer a more enlightened account. I claimed the Citadel with a small unit of disfavored. An efficient solution. The type I would expect from a capable agent. Tell me though, with the edict looming overhead and death the price of failure, why not employ the numerical advantage of the Scarlet Chorus? The siege called for tactics and planning, not raw numbers. For a while, the Adjudicator hovers in silence, shadows trailing from below his robes. I will consider this testimony at length. The court thanks you for it. Is there anything you wish to add at this time? I have told you all that I know. Your testimony is accepted by the court. The statements of our guests raise questions in my mind. 
There is much about this campaign that has caused me to wonder. A shipment of iron weapons was short on arrival. Where coveted iron is concerned, I don't believe it to be a clerical error. One of my agents recovered this seal in Echo Call. It belongs to a merchant collective. Lethian's Crossing is teeming with their kind. If you would root out treachery, I would advise starting there. Petitioners, leave us. I would have a private audience with the Fatebinder. Ascend and join me. You will find the way opened. Okie dokie. Go talk to him ourselves, shall we? You want me to bring all my homies? I want to bring all my homies. I don't go nowhere without my homies. They got my back, yo. Even the Scarlet Chorus one. Who I sort of hang out to dry a little bit. Must admit. Must admit. Kind of my bad. But she's still loyal. Kinda. This civil war, this feud, is an insult to Kairos' peace. It should not have taken the better part of a year to silence the last vestiges of the Oathbreakers. Tunon regards you in thoughtful silence. I agree, Your Honor. Our allies squabble while our enemies regroup. It falls upon the court to measure the extent of the damage and to execute the agents of disorder. I suspect that treachery, negligence, disunity, and greed have infected one or both of our esteemed allies. Until you are instructed otherwise, this matter is the court's primary focus. Graven Ash and the voices of Nerat must be examined in close detail. You are charged with observing the Archons and presenting your case that one of them has wrought chaos and disorder upon the tears. What if I find them both blameless? Then you will have fallen grievously short in your duties. The conquest of the tears frays around us. There is a root cause. If you cannot get to its source, then I shall find another who can. As always, you will be held accountable for what you do in the court's name. But you are free to conduct your investigation in the manner of your choosing. You must expect lies, misdirection, and manipulation. Suffer not such obstructions of justice. The disfavored seem the logical first step in your inquiry. The Legion holds you in some esteem. Engraven Ash has shown deference to the court in times past. No doubt the disfavored will be rife with accusations and evidence against the voices of Nerat. Graven Ash is a noble man, but never underestimate his capacity for deception. A wise general succeeds by knowing when to be unreadable to the enemy. You should, of course, speak with the Scarlet Chorus and gather their testimony. But it stands to reason that most in the chorus would sooner brag about a pauldron fashioned from your skull than entertain your questions. Do not regret killing the rabble that impede your investigation. They will be easily replaced. I'll speak with the Archon of War. Your fellow Fatebinders have been busy acting as my eyes and ears. I have a few leads for you to follow. You should, of course, speak with your brothers and sisters of the court if you need further counsel. Though the disfavored were triumphant in the Blade Grave, I understand that their troubles within the region are unfinished. Talk to the disfavored commanders serving in the Blade Grave. Perhaps they can shine some light on the origins of this feud. The Oathbreakers were reported to be using iron armaments, more than they might acquire from looting what few disfavored they killed. Any iron in the tears not rusted through was made by forge-bound hands in Lethian's crossing. Between craftsman and quartermaster, someone let iron fall into enemy hands. Investigate this matter and bring the thieves to justice. There is a final matter to discuss. A sensitive topic. Though it's impossible to gauge from his expression, Tunon seems more weary than usual. What concerns the court, Your Honor? In spite of the many shortcomings at Vendrian's well, you managed to make a name for yourself. You proclaimed an edict of Kairos, resolved its demanding conditions, and ascended the mountain spire. Any one of these feats would be worthy of recognition by the highest authority. You managed to accomplish three. Tunon hovers in observance, 
awaiting a response. Just another day in the life of a fate binder. I would caution you against such flippancy to your role. Others would look to you for confidence in the court, in Kairos's very laws. I would not have them see this disappointment on display. Ooh. Whether by design or by accident, you have captured the attention of Kairos's army and the local tearsmen alike. This is no small opportunity, and the court charges you with exploiting your new standing to its fullest potential. You have a title in our hierarchy. However, it's a little-known secret that one's standing in the world is determined by their infamy, their deeds, and how they come to be known. Mind this notion as you bring justice to this lawless frontier. There may come a time when your deeds speak for you louder than any title. Whatever you did to capture the attention of the masses at Vendrian's well, I would encourage you to do so again. I look forward to chaining chaos to my will. So long as order and Kairos's law follow in your wake. You may dispatch chaos however you see fit. You are dismissed. Yeah. Should the court have need of your presence, you will receive word. Go forth and do my bidding, and bring glory and honor to the tears in Kairos' name. Tunon wraps his gavel against the floor, the singular note resounding through the hall. Does it mean he just tell me to do 500 million different things? I swear he did. We got level ups. The liquor? Do we have level ups? Yes, we do. Alright. I kind of want more magical herb with you. I think. I don't even know. Mm. Yeah, we'll put one into wits for you. And what else you got? Preservation? Can we do more preservation? Arcane shield? Yeah, what's this one? Bigger. Passage of hours. What do we get at Sage? Watch his judgment. Yeah, quill. Weary gaze. Does he have any actual like magic attacks, or is that all from the um from the staff that he wields? So I don't really know. Alright, what do we got here? Greater renewal. Empowers a renewal renewal ability. Place a preservation seal on an ally. If an ally's health falls below a limit. They healed for a large amount of health and the seal is destroyed. That sounds pretty good. We'll have that. He is my healer. Now, I'm pretty sure you told me to do a 500 million different things, so... Meet Graven Ash at Iron Hearth. Okie dokie. That doesn't necessarily say where to go. Stirring Visions. Find a way to Lethian Crossing Spire. Alright. Let's roll out, guys. There's much to be done. And I mean a fuck ton of shit to be done. Let's roll. Come on, fellas, hurry up. We're in a hurry here. It's shit to be done. Didn't you hear what I said? Welcome back, kid. Amusing as it would be to watch the edict drop. Yes, I'm glad you lived. Bleeding Mark, Archon of Shadows. Rouses from a faraway stare, turning to face you with a wry smile. Though he stands still, he seems to sift in and out of the shadows that shroud him. He you threw your rings on Graven Ash's side. Not a bad bet to pick up the Archon of War. To pick the Archon of War. But tell me the truth. Did you go with Ash because it seemed like the right thing to do, or because supporting the voices was a worse option? What sane creature would trust the voice of Narat? One does like to win a battle every once in a while. At least the voice of Narat isn't consumed by grief or hesitation like some Archons I know. Don't mistake him, the Archon of Secrets thrives on mistrust. When everyone believes you're lying, speaking the truth is a fine blade with which to cut your enemy. All that matters is that the Edict of Execution was stayed. Those stationed at Vendrian's Well should be thanking you for their lives. Now I assume you're off to meet with Ash, but first, you and I need to have a little chat. I'm listening. Everyone's keeping an eye on you, because you did something nobody has done before. Got to guess what that might be? Um... Awaken a spire of the old walls? You're not wrong. 
That was definitely a shock, but I doubt that's the sole reason you've made the tears tremble. Proclaiming an edict isn't new, neither is surviving or resolving the commandments of an edict, but you're the first to proclaim and resolve the very same edict, and it didn't kill you. In one fell swoop you survived your second edict, resolving the very one you had proclaimed. You woke in an arcane structure that had slept for several centuries. And now I go on the short list for people who stand out as potential problems. More or less. Mostly more. He offers you a dangerous grin. I don't care what you do with the information, but you should know the danger you're in now that you've put yourself on the map. Sticking with the disfavored is a smart idea, kid. At least, smarter than getting mixed up with the Archon of Secrets. You'll never really be one of them. But if you value Ash's warriors, they'll serve you the best they can. Thanks for the advice. The Archon of Shadows shrugs to you in farewell, but his golden eyes are alight with interest as he watches you. Well, thank you. Now we're rolling out. We're rolling out this time for sheezies. For realsy tealsies. Where are we going? What is this? Sunset Spire, Lethian's Crossing. Well, that's kind of next. Where's Ironhearth over there? Nope. Zoom out at all? No, I can't. Okay. Okay, well... Seeing that spire is like right there, I guess I should probably go there. Lethian's Crossing. Two days and 13 hours. It's a long trip. Ambush! A group of mercenaries, members of the Bronze Brotherhood, are blocking the road to Lethian's Crossing. Alright! Some action! There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of talking. There's a lot more talking than there is murdering. That's okay, I don't mind. I got it. I like talking, and I like murdering. Everything's good. I'm happy. I hope you guys are happy. I mean, if you didn't like talking, you probably, in dialogue, you probably wouldn't be watching this series. You must be joking at all? No one passes through without paying. Okay. A small figure stands before some armored-clad soldiers. His arms move wildly as he gestures in frustration, yelling at the man directly in front of him. Absolutely not. I've come through Iron Hall Trail more times than I can remember. No one ever asked for a toll before, and I won't be paying one now. He notices you standing nearby and turns to speak. Fatebinder, surely you of all people can help me. My name is Aster. I must get to Lethian's Crossing. I have goods to deliver. Tell this man I will not be paying a toll to him or anyone. And he is to let me through. He folds his arm over his chest and nods with a pronounced finality. Greetings, Fatebinder. I am sorry you've been drawn into this. What you've stumbled into here is merely a conflict of the changing times. I am Will of the Bronze Brotherhood. Iron Hall Trail is under our protection, and anyone passing through must obey our rules. If this gentleman would like passage through our land, a simple donation is required. He holds out his hand. These funds help our cause and keep Iron Hall a safer place for all travellers. Clearly you both can see the value in that. Aster speaks, his arms swinging about again, emphasising his words. And who exactly is keeping it safe? You? Standing there with your weapons at the ready against me? His arm drops. Arms drop and he turns to you again. I'm naught but a travelling merchant. I have no money to spare and I certainly pose no threat to anyone. Keep this area safe indeed. He points at Will. You're the only threat here. Fatebinder, please. Talk some sense into this man. I don't know. Whose side should I take on? I kind of want to be bad. Just because you passed here through here before means nothing. Pay the toll now or head back. You try my patience. Aster fumes for a few moments, his mouth comically opening and closing in a rage. I cannot abide this level of absurdity. He rifles through his belongings and pulls out some rings, slamming them down into Will's outstretched hand. Fine. Here is your toll, thief. Now get out of my way. He turns to you, a look of distaste on his face. I will not forget your help, Fatebinder. Will smiles and put the rings in his pouch hanging from his neck. I knew you'd see it my way, Fatebinder. He makes an exaggerated flourish and moves out of Ass's way. And you, my good merchant, thank you for your gracious payment. You may pass. Should've just killed them all. That would've been easier. Will returns to his position and looks over you. His former genial mood gone. So a Fatebinder in our little corner of the world. Who'd ever have thought this would happen? He spits between his feet, then crushes the dirt with his boot. 
While I appreciate your help dealing with the merchant, I'm afraid I can't let you pass until you've spoken with our leader. Red Timon. Personally, I thought he was crazy for saying you'd vis be visiting Lithian's Crossing. Looks like I owe him a few rings. He shakes his, the pouch around his neck, making the rings inside jingle melodically. Not that there's a shortage of those out here. What can this humble servant of the Brotherhood do for you, Fatebinder? And don't ask me to let you through because it isn't happening. Someone made the mistake of giving this little man way too much power. And he's about to discover what happens when you stand in my way. If you think you can get him to move, do it. With pleasure. Hey, shit meat. Do you plan on moving your ass this century, or do we have to stand here jawing like a bunch of greybeards? We're on a mission. And staring at your ugly mug and catching up on the past won't get it done any faster. Are you going to move on, or do I need to start cutting? Because I'm partial to either option. The mercenary's mouth hangs open in disbelief. He swallows and attempts to gather his pride. I, I would help you, but my boss told me to guard this bridge. No one gets by without Rayodamon's permission. Kairos, give me strength. You deserve this far more than I'm going to enjoy it. Verse swings her fist and lands a punch with a meaty whack, snapping back the nursery's mercenary's head. Will rubs his cheek. Hold on, I'm just doing my job. I apologize if I offended. Rayodamon will have my head if I let you through. There's nothing I can do about it. While you're talking to Will, a striking man with a shock of bright blonde hair approaches. Moving away from some men searching bodies of slain soldiers to the south, he watches you intently as he closes, his angular features pulling into a look of disdain. And here's the fate binder. He doesn't master displeasure in his voice. I knew I'd see you. I was just wondering when. One trip to Lethian's Crossing was it enough, governor? He doesn't even master contempt in his voice. You had to return when no one asked you to come. Throwing me out of my home wasn't sufficient. Are you here to disrupt my life some more? He looks at his men, who stop to watch the conversation. You aren't done. He flicks his hand at them and then returns to their searching. Doesn't really matter why you're here. I don't care. I've got more important things to worry about. In case you forgot me already, my name is Rayodamon. I am first brother, leader of the Bronze Brotherhood. And I'm sure you already know that. I couldn't help but see you over here, talking with Will, and that traveling merchant. Only here for a moment and already sticking your nose in where it doesn't belong, do you? Aren't you? I don't appreciate others invading my territory, Fatebinder. I told him he had to speak to you, Radamon. He wandered through, but I told him no. If you don't give me the signal, the Fatebinder isn't getting into Lethian's Crossing. No one will invade your territory. Radamon stares at Will for a few moments, lips pursed, then continues as if Will never spoke. Watch yourself while you're, my gu while you're a guest of my land. If you come to stir up more trouble, we are well equipped, and we're not going to back down in the defense of what is rightfully ours. He sweeps his arm in front of him, gesturing to the surrounding countryside. Welby and I might not always agree, but this is one point we see eye to eye on. If you step out of line, we will both correct you. His eyes narrow and he leans towards you. You are not welcome here. Now tell me what you want or leave. Let's see, we got a lot of options here. You would do well to watch your tone when speaking to a fate binder. Radamon laughs hollowly. I don't care about Kairos' forces. I've already reaped the rewards of my loyalty, and I'll not make that mistake again. You have taken my home, but I will have it back. I won't cower when you raise your voice against me, lapdog. Attack. I knew you couldn't be trusted, Cad. The forces of Kairos will always show their true face if pushed. Radamon retreats, calling to his men as he runs. Guards! We have a snake in our midst to arms. Your day Alright, here we go. Smash him. Dark all of a sudden. Did we just lose one? We did lose one. How the hell did that happen? Pull your finger out, guys. Come on. Can someone resurrect here, please? Heal. Sunder this bitch. I want him dead. 
Why is that healer not healing? Heal harder. Thank you. Oh, you're on your own now, son. You like them apples, bitch. We're gonna take you out. Die, you fuck. Yeah, that's what I thought. Asshole. Alright, you got any shit on you? I hope Will so. Do. Oh, you're not even carrying anything? You suck. Well, I don't know where the rest of them went. But we'll get them soon enough. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I see something. Who are you? More tallies to the body count. You're on your own, man. You really want to fight us? 1v4? Are you fucking suicidal? Is that your problem? You have no will to live. Okay, whatever. I'll gladly fulfill your wish to die. Not even a problem, Sunny Jim. Take him out. Let's check. Your days end here. Okay, there are more. And in this case, there's two. Makes me a little bit nervous. Seen the last two hurt us so much. Though I think that one guy might have been super, super strong. Because these guys are not. Yeah, they're not strong at all. It's a shame there's no, like, loot here. Why is there no loot? I want loot! Take him out! Yeah. Ah, look, there is some loot. I love loot. Bronze Brotherhood Bracers and Bronze Brotherhood Helm. I'll take it. Where's your boss gone? I want him too. Well, I really don't want to leave any of you guys alive so that you can haunt me later. I'd rather deal with the problem now. Not a into leaving myself future problems. Let's check over here. I feel like that's the way he went. There he is. On it. There's a couple. To battle. To battle. <laughs> Come on. Slash this bitch. Oh, ouch. Come on, healer. Sorry. My healer seems so average at healing. Please pull finger healer. That's what you're here for, to heal. Take him out. There we go. Do we get breaks in this gang or what? No. <laughs> work, 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 death. That's how it goes, okay? Get used to it. Just like, just like real modern life. Except with less murdering. Actually, I can... <laughs> never mind, never mind. It's getting dark. It's getting dark, and we're gonna move on. Let's go! Oh wait. Ah, fuck it. We're good. Fuck these guys. Uh, maybe I should... Should I... Rest? Yeah, actually, I think I will stop this episode here and make camp. Just to heal up these injuries. Because we are quite deep in the episode now, so... I'm gonna leave this episode here. Thank you guys for watching, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next episode.